Okay, well, I'm here today with uh, Mark Doxer, who is the uh, newly selected uh, chair of the select board. So congratulations, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Much and, uh, how, how are you and your family doing with the uh, with being locked in and all that thus far? Um, we're doing okay. We're, we're hanging in. We're trying to uh, restrict what we do and get our shopping down to kind of once a week. We're keeping our distance. Uh, we're going on walks. Exercise, I think, is really important. Good. Good. and trying to get into some new routines. Uh, excellent, excellent. Well, as, as people who are viewing this can see, we are doing this interview, um, trying to do some social distancing here while we're doing this and, and doing this virtually, uh, which I understand is uh, something that the select board is going to be trying tomorrow night at its meeting. Absolutely. So this is kind of the new, you know, people call it virtual reality. This is, I think, the new reality. Okay. Uh, what we're hoping to do is allow for as much normalcy as we possibly can. Um, there are a lot of things that are going on, um, folks working for the town, uh, particularly the emergency groups, but, but all the staff at this point are working very hard to allow the business of the town to continue, especially okay. for essential services. And what we want to be able to do is let the residents know kind of what things are happening and how to reach out. So if there are particular problems, what to do, resources that they can get quickly. We know that not everyone has internet access. Um, we hope that many people are able to watch TV. They can use telephone and things. So we want to lay out a number of options so that people can reach out if they have issues or questions. Sure, sure. So uh, the, med the meeting was originally scheduled for last night. You guys decided to push it till tonight. Um, was that just to get the technology in order or was there something else that needed to take place there um, for the reason for the delay? No, the real driver was that at the state level, there are a lot of things, you know, th everything is moving very, very quickly right now. Even the governor, um, as of just an hour ago, uh, announced some updates in terms of non-essential services uh, sure. wants shuttered till the 4th of May. Uh, right. There are some things that relate to town government and operations um, that we expected and may still expect before the meeting. And it, it felt better to wait just the one day um, hoping that we'd have in our packet a lot of the information and even more coming about uh, changes a la the two o'clock uh, discussion today from Governor Baker. So sure, that's, that's the reasoning. Yeah, okay, that, that's good. Um, so you do have a, a, an agenda and a full agenda tomorrow night. You'll be getting a few reports um, from some various town departments that I see. Is the board conducting any business or any votes? Yes. So um, as you mentioned, the, the core really is to talk about what's happening with town operations. Mm -hmm. uh, to have the faces of a number of the, the people that are on the, the command staff uh, available, talking a little bit about what they're doing if they so choose. Really what we're doing in, ter in terms of response and how people, people can be helpful, and as I mentioned, to reach out and, and what you can get from that. We do have some things um, on the agenda. Um, there is, will be a vote in terms of a state of emergency, uh, similar to what a number of towns around us have, al have already done and what the state has already done. Uh, I think it was 180 or 190 uh, cities and towns have already done that. Uh, so that's on the agenda. There may be some updates from the Board of Health. Um, again, uh, new regulations, changes that are required. Uh, same thing from, from state, uh, state government. There may be some issues that we want to go through. There's also a, um, a health insurance agreement that needs to be approved. We'll go through that. There'll be a chance for the select board members to uh, speak about kind of what's happening and questions they may have. And then we'll talk about our agenda for uh, the April 14th, which is our next planned meeting. Now, I, I noticed that you do have in the agenda public comment plan. How would a member of the public uh, actually comment on the meeting, seeing as it's going to be virtual? So what we're asking people to do is if they have uh, questions and comments, as they always do, to use the email system that's in place, selectboard at ci.reading.ma.us, and to send us a message. So. In the packet, we published everything that was received since the last meeting and through yesterday. That's already there. If there are other things that people um, have questions about, uh, if it relates to things that are on the agenda, we hope to be able to cover them. So perhaps people have a question about what was presented during the meeting. By sending an email, we're going to try to monitor that and, and to be able to cover that. Um, we also want to make it seem as much like a regular meeting as possible, and open meeting law requires that if someone were to attend the meeting and they brought up a topic that wasn't on the agenda, we actually can't talk about it during the meeting. We can uh, follow it up separately, we can right. put it onto an upcoming agenda, but, but it's not like we could have a chat uh, sort of back and forth. Open meeting law doesn't allow for that. It requires public notice of, of anything to be discussed. Sure. 
So Mark, your first meeting as chair was held by telephone, over telephone, which is kind of a unique and interesting situation. And uh, this is gonna be another unique one. Um, any thoughts about how you might handle this situation? <laughs> we're learning as we're going. I think the most important part for us is to try to allow people to have access to this meeting in whatever ways they possibly can. So watching it on RCTV, it'll be broadcast live through Facebook. Obviously we'd have YouTube afterward but we wanna be able to get uh, messages out to the public. We wanna be able to let them see members of the command staff, uh, how everyone is working together and working really hard for the town to get things done. Um, and that we're very appreciative of those activities. And as I mentioned, to kind of get back a little bit to the sense of normalcy, uh, we're trying to incorporate a little bit more technology. We're trying to use uh, video uh, as the add-on piece here. Again, so people can, can see faces. Very important that we're maintaining the social distancing and to model that behavior. And so that's why we're not having any, any people uh, that will be uh, present and, and no congregation of, of people at all. So it, it really is trying to make sure that we can uh, get out a lot of information about what's happening, make sure people know what resources are available, how to reach out. So obviously in, in the case of an emergency, you know, 911 is the, the right answer. Right. But in uh, non-emergency situations, how can they get the information they need? How, if there are people who need some help to be able to have resources to go to very quickly. Sure. Um, that's really what we would hope to accomplish tonight in addition to taking the votes on the items on the, on the agenda. And I know there's some information on the town website in regards to what services are available and, and that kind of thing. You wanna share anything about what, what is available for residents? Yes, please. And pardon me while I turn a little bit to the left because I'm gonna be looking at another screen, but I, but I think it'll be helpful. Um, the town website has been updated greatly and at the top of the screen there's a red bar that says everything you need to know during the COVID-19 state of emergency and if you click on that there are quite a few resources there are resources about code red and signing up for that there is a dashboard for the state of or commonwealth of massachusetts COVID-19 that has quite a bit of information on um, numbers where things are happening updates that are coming from the state and that's very helpful and then further down the page, very specifically, is the latest information from the Reading Town and Schools. And again, it has information on if you have uh, questions, um, where you can look to get information, phone numbers that you can call, uh, other things related from paying bills and fees, getting permits, borrowing ebooks, licenses and voting, registering for alerts and rubbish and recycling. Let's not forget that. Sure. So a number of these services from the town are still in operation in various forms. They just might be a little different than people are used to. Yeah, I think that's really the, the right expression for it. A lot of things are, are different. Um, clearly, the non-essential services have to be slowed down uh, by order of the governor and, and just for, for prudence at this point. But a lot of the essentials are, are continuing. Obviously, uh, emergency services are taking place, public works, uh, the light board. Uh, our light department, um, all those activities are, are up and running and, and available and, and doing their part to keep this town you know, moving forward here. As, as we saw with the power outage on Main Street last night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. No, it, 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 these folks are really dedicated. They deserve a lot of praise for all the hard work that they're putting in to, to keep things going. These clearly are really different times for us all. Um, and I think what we want to show to the residents is that uh, they can feel confident that they're safe, they're being taken care of. And for folks who do need a little extra help, there are resources available, there are places to look, again, by phone, by email, by website, by uh, 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 online activities, any of the above. There are all sorts of ways to reach out and people responsible to make sure that that's happening in town. Right, so could you just share that website address with everybody in case someone isn't aware of what it is? That's the town website, of course. Absolutely, so the website is readingma.gov. And if you go to the top of that website, um, there is a red banner across it, uh, just below the, the kind of town of Reading little image. It says everything you need to know during the COVID-19 state of emergency. Just click on read more, and then all those resources are available. All those resources are available. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Mark. We really look forward to seeing a little bit of normalcy with the uh, select board meeting tomorrow night, and a little bit of abnormalcy also with the select board meeting tomorrow night. Yes. And I wanna thank you folks too, and, and Phil in particular, um, working on this. What we're trying to do again is find a good way to get communication uh, going with the town and to be able to share the information that's necessary, as well as, as to get input from the town. And by taking this and broadcasting it, we think this is a, a great opportunity to do that. 
Excellent. Well, thank you, Mark, and we'll see you tomorrow night. This is Kevin Vent, and I'll be uh, signing off now for RCTV, talking about tomorrow night's select board meeting. Have a good day.